the ratios for the stock chapter are earnings per share. The formula they give you in the book is uh, net income minus preferred dividends divided by average common shares. That's really very simplified. If you're an accounting major, there's a whole chapter on how to compute earnings per share. But this gives you the idea of what it is. It's your earnings. Remember, earnings is another word for net income per share. For the bottom, you have your common shares. And like we said, when we just talk about stock, we're always talking about common shareholders. When you're talking about earnings per share, you're talking about earnings per share for the common shareholders. Price to earnings ratio then is your current market price divided by this earnings per share. So you notice that number goes down there. These are the two key numbers people use when talking about a company. And this takes into account the current market price, which is not on your financial statements anywhere. If somebody has $2 of earnings, and you're paying $20 for it, you're paying 10 times earnings. Net income, obviously, if I've got 10 shares outstanding or if I've got a million shares outstanding, it's hard to compare just net income to net income. So this makes it per share. When we talked about dilution, the more shares you have, obviously your earnings per share gets diluted. Dividend yield is the dividend that people pay divided by, this is your current stock price. So it's the stock price today. That's not on your financial statements. But if I want to buy some shares, let's say I'm going to buy AT&T, say it's $30 and it's paying a $3 dividend. That's a 10% dividend. That's better than what I can get at any regular bank. So if you're interested in dividends, this is telling you what interest rate in essence you're getting in terms of a dividend based on what you pay today. Rate of return on equity, like all of our rate of returns that we've been doing, net income over whatever this is, and this one's equity. So it's your net income. Subtract out preferred dividends because before they can pay the commoners, they've got to take those preferred dividends out of net income. Doesn't mean preferred dividends go on the income statement but we got to pay those guys before the commoners get their money. That's rate of return on equity. The nice thing is in real life, I just looked up Walmart in Yahoo just because uh, with Google, it takes up more than one screen, but they will always tell you this is how important earnings per share is. That's going to be given $4.75 because everybody needs to know that. The price earnings ratio is also going to be given. You could have computed it if the price earnings, so put the price on top. So the 138 divided by the 475 will give you 29.12. If you want to check on your calculator, that really does work. Your dividend yield, they'll usually give you that. If they pay normally, again, it's not guaranteed, but normally they pay $2.20 every year. And if you take 220 divided by that 138, you'll come up with that 1.59%. Those numbers are so important that those are shown. If you wanted to compare Walmart to Target, it doesn't make sense to just look at net income. You'd want to look at the price earnings ratio and the earnings per share. Again, earnings per share will tell you how well the companies are doing based on the number of shares outstanding. So if one of them's $25 and the other's $138, the price earnings ratio will adjust for that. And then for the last thing, I thought I'd just show you this. If you're ever looking for financial statements, and as you go through the business program, there'll be times when they want you to contrast things. The easiest place is the SEC. And you go here to filings and company filings. You can look up a company. So I'm going to look up Walmart, do a search, and this is all their filings. If you're working for a public company, they, they don't call it an annual report. They call it a 10K. Uh, the annual report's part of the 10K, but there's also a whole bunch of other things. But the document that you'd look for is the 10K. And then they've got this little interactive button that is convenient. Notice I've got an income statement here. So if I wanted to do their rate of return on equity, I take that 14881 and then I can click on the balance sheet and see that the total shareholders equity is 74669 
And remember, you take an average, so I would add these two together and divide by two, like we've done on all the averages, on all the ratios, where one thing's an income statement, the other thing's a balance sheet. So I do that average, and that's where I'd get those numbers. So the rate of return on equity would be, these are the two stockholders equity divided by two, gives you that number. Always double check, make sure that's in between those. And that income divided by that gives them about a 20% return on equity and a higher percentage returns better than a 